Welcome to Jam Yaps Media, or Jam for short, where I cover all of the topics that I'm passionate about. This often ranges from music to sport to movies and video games. I recently spoke with Spender C about his history and passion for punk and rap music. We also got to talk about his upcoming album and show in Sydney this coming Monday. Let's stop messing about though and get to my interview with Spender C. Sort of feels like you've been around forever. When did you first start producing and performing? I started DJing probably about 12 years ago. Yep. Um, before that, I was uh, playing in bands. Um, but I just saw DJing as sort of an extension of that, extension of like another way to play music and sort of do it by myself and not have to worry about the hassle of like organizing four, five, six other band members. Um, and then production, probably producing, like releasing original stuff for the last five years. And you seem to have a fairly diverse taste in music. Where did that come from? I think that just comes from like being in bands. You know, if you listen to an album from a band from start to finish, like it's a lot of different tempo, a lot of different sounds, a lot of different changes. And so then when I started DJing, it was like more bar gigs. So it was, you know, you had to play for like eight hours. So I had to play from the start of the night when there was like three people there to, you know, to really get pumping till the end of the night when you did like some slow jams and stuff. So, and also house parties, which was just like a whole bunch of everything coming from mashup days, you know, playing like Stevie Wonder into like into some breaks and into some drum and bass. And so it's just always just been like just that, yeah, I guess a classic eclectic taste. Just like I'm just starting to get bored. I think you're just playing the same stuff. So when I produce now, I just gotta try and not do something that I've done before and explore different tempos and styles. And you've been working on an album recently. Are you getting close to the end of that? Yeah, well, close to the end. I don't even know what that means. But I've been working on it for about twelve months. Um, probably a little longer, but I'd say twelve months. So yeah, and yeah, we've got the track list sorted. So I'm working on it as we speak, and just sort of just trying to finesse everything, polish everything off, um, and get a mix by the end of April. We hope to wrap it up for potentially July, August release. And what can people expect from that album? Uh, just like we were before, like a lot of different styles. Uh, the same thread, like it still has that same sort of party vibe going through every track. Like every track's got that energy. Um, but there's a lot of different tempos. There's trap, there's like twerk, um, New Orleans kind of bounce um, character in there. There's some house. So a few different tempos, a lot of different um, guest vocalists. Pretty much every track has a guest on it, which I'm really happy about. Do you find it really creatively fulfilling to have all those guests involved? I do, yeah, and I, I always just, I've always loved tracks with vocals, like, <clears throat> it's something I can't really get away from, like, uh, pretty much everything I play has a, some sort of, like, like, a rap or, like, a top line or something, like that. I love rap, I love hip-hop music, I've always liked hip-hop, I've always played hip-hop, and there's a lot of rappers and hip-hop um, artists on the album, I just, think, I just think it gives the track something interesting and some energy, like, I just always feel like a good vocal track is, um, or is it a bit more energy than just an instrumental track? And are you finding that last little polishing bit the hardest in terms of... Yeah, it's affecting? always the hardest, man. When I'm, when I'm writing stuff, like you get inspired, like, oh, you know, writing, that's more creative. But like the last 10% is more like just... It's still creative, but it's more like you're just working within the, the parameters of what you've already written and just trying to make that sound better, which is always like, you know, it's like the last 10% is like 90% of the struggle. And you were recently in America? Yeah, we uh, went over to New Orleans to shoot a film clip for the next single uh, because it features uh, Flyboy Kino, who was on the Jack U album, and uh, he lives in New Orleans, so we did the track you know, via the internet, as you do. And then it just thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to fly over and uh, do the film clip in New Orleans, so we did that. We then went to LA for a couple of weeks. I did some sessions there, and those tracks, the LA sessions, are probably going to be for later on in the year after the album. And if I remember correctly, you started a project recently to showcase Aussie hip-hop and punk music as well? Well, I did a 
little remix EP called the Plug EP, which was the concept behind that was sort of remixing Australian rap art and punk artists uh, into a more sort of EDM dance floor friendly format. Uh, and I've been doing a little bit of sort of blog writing, um, sort of showcasing Aussie um, uh, rap rap artists and rap talent because it's just like it's just probably the most exciting thing for me that's going on in Australia uh, musically. So for me, in, in my opinion, is that is that rap scene like Brisbane and maybe Brisbane had something to do with that. I've been here for about a year, and the scene here has just exploded, and there's so much so much talent and so much love. Like everyone supports everyone, so it's, I think the scene, I think Brisbane has really inspired me. Uh, even more to sort of sort of tap into that rap, that rap scene and keep an eye on that. Have you noticed any big differences between Sydney and Brisbane? Uh, probably just uh, so just a lot. Like there's like uh, you know, it's, it's competition everywhere, but <clears throat> uh, in Brisbane, you know, when there's a show, everyone will rock up, everyone will come out, everyone will play along. It just seems like a really great, like really supportive network. I'm not saying like that Sydney's for haters and this is. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying like there's just, I just feel like there's a bit more. Obviously, the sports is a bit more uh, in Brisbane. And you've been touring your latest track recently. How has the response been so far? It's been great. Like the um, the shows have been crazy because I've been doing the tracks with Cold Shot over from Sydney. So we, I've been touring with those guys, and yeah, the shows have been. Shows have been really wild, really crazy. Like, you know, stage diving and hanging off ceilings and doing crazy shit. It's good fun. Can we expect more of that in Sydney coming up? Yeah, the Sydney show, we're going to have lots of guests. Uh, and uh, it's, yeah, we're sort of building momentum towards towards that. That's, that's the last show, so we're going to leave nothing in the tank for that one. So I think that's going to be a wild one. Thank you very much. Cool, thanks, mate. Good luck with the shows. Cheers, buddy. I hope everyone enjoyed listening to my conversation with Spender C. If you enjoyed this interview, please subscribe to the channel, bookmark my website, jamieappsmedia.com, or support over on patreon.com forward slash jamieappsmedia so that I can continue to bring you more interviews in the future. Thanks.